another San Franciscan, Frank Werber, who was a waiter and a publicist of a hungry eye and ended up being the manager of the Kingston Trio. As a result of that, he ended up being a song publisher and part owner of a nightclub, the Trident, in South Toledo. He just showed up. Story. I mean, no, he's, you know. I mean, was he a, a, a big presence or was he just sort of low key? And oh, no, he was a major big, big presence on, on every level, you know. Yes. He was busted for pot. They broke, you know, they, the guys broke in here. He, I mean, he was so notorious that they, they robbed the downstairs and upstairs. They came in in the middle of the night and cut a big, huge hole in the floor downstairs and came and took the saves, took everything out of the place, you know. And Frank was famous for pot, and he and, and he'd been busted uh, for marijuana. Managed to get out of that. He had the best marijuana anybody would ever smoked, and, uh, and this was he this would always claim. Then, then, yeah. yeah, this was then. This is when, yeah. I mean, this was amazing this is before stuff. Before the vintage year. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, that no. This before, was like the best. This was peaks and labels. He he used to call it gold. And one of the things Frank used to tell us, he said. The guy I get it from claims to sell Walt Disney a half a pound of this once a month for his artists. That would explain a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and he meant it. He meant it as far as he was concerned. So Walt used to, to, to get it for his artists. That's yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, the weed has a long and honorable history in the arts. It's not just so. like rock and roll musicians right. discovered it or anything. No. Right. You no. Know. no, I think so. Like when I was meeting all my dad's friends, you know, and all these great Louis musicians. Louis Armstrong, every day of his adult life. Bing yeah. Crosby, every day of his adult life. Right, right. It, it, Peggy Lee, Tony Bennett. Bing I ran Crosby. into Tony Bennett is in a lobby of a Beverly Hills hotel, and I walked up to him and I said, Tony, I just wanted to say thanks for all those long-term marijuana use studies you've been running. <laughs> and he looked at me like, huh? And then he smiles and he goes, you're very welcome. <laughs> Tony Bennett is actually a very cool guy. Huh? Yeah. No kidding. Oh, extremely. When you look at all his civil rights stuff and everything, man, the guy's really amazing. And he won't sing uh, the Star Spangled Banner at baseball games because it's a war song and he's a pacifist. Mm -hmm. He'll sing America the Beautiful, but that's all. Good yeah, thing. That's good. I didn't know that. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> he's, fucking, he's a fucking cool yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah. So how did the, the LSD thing sort of seep into it? The LSD thing seep into it. Let's see the LSD. <laughs> <laughs> the LSD thing seeped into it because... Owsley. Uh, yeah, well, Owsley eventually ended up being part of it, but you know, it was Tim Leary and Richard Albert and uh, and them doing those experiments at Harvard, and, and that caught your attention. And the Stanford I research yeah. was where the dead before, got onto it. The scene, yeah. you know, but as, I think Owsley started of a, producing in '64.